Welcome back to New World Next Week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com. Register your real identity or get off the internet. We've got that story plus GMO PR. But first, we've all had a lot of fun this week watching National Lampoon's Trump trip, laughing at orbs and dancing with swords. But now really comes perhaps kind of a crowning ritual, if you will, of this whole emotional con game. NATO's feel-good meeting aims to impress Trump. Ribbon cutting, jets overhead, and a dinner in a new billion-dollar headquarters. Donald Trump's first meeting at NATO is choreographed to impress a U.S. president who once called the Western alliance obsolete. In a fortuitous twist, a series of NATO goals, including a new headquarters, have coalesced around Trump's visit. Trump, a New Yorker, is expected to unveil a memorial to the September 11, 2001 attacks placed at the entrance to the new NATO building that's been almost two decades in the making. NATO officials hope the steel wreckage from one of the Twin Towers will remind Trump that the only time the alliance has activated its collective defense clause was following the attacks on New York and Washington, a decision that also sent NATO into Afghanistan to fight the militants behind them. With no final communique and a meeting consisting only of dinner with NATO allies rather than sessions including non-member partners such as Sweden and Ukraine, diplomats say this alliance is playing up more of the pomp rather than new policies, just like they did with previous puppet presidents Bush and Obama. But it'll be more spectacular, this article says, with allied jets due to fly over Trump and other leaders at the opening of NATO's new headquarters. So, in summation, multi-generational serial killers who display these multiple personalities for different audiences are saying, we have some planes and they're going to fly them over some melted 9-11 steel at the new Church of War they're dedicating. Is that... Does that sum it up, James? Pretty much does it. This is one of those articles where the the further down I kept reading, the more enraged I got because it was just uh, just every aspect of everything that's going on in this article is pushing all my buttons. I don't know about you. Um, the fact that basically they're treating Trump like some overgrown monkey who shall will be dazzled by this display and you know and the fact that that's probably true <laughs> and the fact that everyone just kind of accepts that yeah you just put on a nice show for him and uh, flatter him a little bit and he'll be on your side and does anyone expect that that's that isn't how this will go exactly to this to, i mean they could script it um, they probably already have and uh does anyone think he's gonna get up there and say yeah nato's obsolete and we're pulling out no, no, he's not going to say that. He's going to say NATO is a strong and valuable ally of the U.S. and we need it on our side and blah, blah, blah. So uh, business as usual in that regard. And then you get to the fact that, yeah, they're getting a new HQ and expanding into Montenegro. Yay, because the North Atlantic Treaty Organization keeps expanding further and further and further around the world and closer and closer and closer to Russia. But damn those Russians for putting their borders so close to NATO territory, huh? And uh, so that that part of it is enraging. And then, yeah, you get to the 9-11 part. And yep, let's, let's use some of the 9-11 memorial uh, twisted wreckage and we'll, uh, we'll, make, we'll make something out of it. We'll, we'll, we'll just put it on display for people so they know what we've done. And uh, let's not forget NATO's key role in what happened with uh, 9-11. And of course, the fact that the first and only time NATO ever invoked their, what is it, Article 5 Collective Self-Defense Treaty was on the back of 9-11. And that was, of course, because 9-11 was an attack by Afghanistan on the United States? Well, no, but okay, bin Laden was in Afghanistan. They were sheltering Bin Laden, right? And we all know it was Bin Laden because, um, oh yeah, because of that closed door secret testimony that they they gave to NATO. Hey guys, trust us, it was Bin Laden, and they wouldn't they wouldn't come out on the record and say what they told people in NATO as to Bin Laden's culpability at that time. That was, I believe, what October of two thousand one. So, a couple of weeks, the uh, the Ground Zero was still literally smoldering. They had a secret report that was delivered to them about uh, bin Laden's culpability, and NATO said, okay, case closed, let's go to war. And 16 years later, here here they are, still in Afghanistan, still looking to do another surge, because they need more troops, more troops for Afghanistan. 
the never-ending war. And uh, NATO has been an extremely integral part of all of this and of the entire war of terror that has been waged for the last couple of decades. And Trump is going to give his big seal of approval to it. So business as usual, 100% under the new boss, same as the old boss. Business as usual, mission accomplished, and and don't forget, you know, now the you know massive opium explosion, way more than there ever was pre nine eleven, which also I think ties into all of this. A lot of this, this whole Trump trip show, also just the hypocrisy of it all, just the bald faced, unbelievable, stunning hypocrisy of it all. For me, is maybe summed up with old Toby Keith playing in Riyadh for that men's only concert, you know, Mister put the boot in your ass USA guy from, you know, like you said, 16 years ago when a different agenda was kind of playing out. James, I was digging back in our New World Next Week archives, kind of looking for some of the other times we've maybe discussed NATO. And I found one nearly five years ago, almost exactly back in June 14th of 2012, NATO preparing vast disinformation campaign against Syria. That was our first story on that New World Next Week episode. And for fun, extra context to all of this in that episode, we were also discussing how Obama's targeted killings, leaks, and the everything is classified state have fused. Past is prologue. As we move to our second story this week on New World Next Week episode 311, for May 25th, 2017, China pushes public to accept GMO as the Syngenta takeover nears. This, we went from Reuters, now we'll go to Bloomberg. China will carry out a nationwide poll next month to test the public's acceptance of genetically modified food, a technology the government says would boost yields and sustainable agriculture in a country that's seen consumption soar. Beijing's prestigious Tsinghua University and two other Chinese colleges will carry out the survey sponsored by the government and carried out in tandem with a campaign on social media to broadcast basic knowledge on GMO technology. Like a 2012 trial of so-called golden rice that caused a public storm after reports that the rice was fed to children without the parents being aware that it was genetically modified. That's, that's all that's wrong with the golden rice scheme, according to this Bloomberg article. But I think then it kind of gets to the kernel of truth, if you will, Syngenta which produces genetically modified seeds for corn, is gearing up for rapid expansion in the country after shareholders accepted a $43 billion offer for the Swiss agribusiness by China National Chemical Corporation. The state-owned company is expected to complete the deal this month. James? Well, uh, again, this should not be surprising particularly surprising to anyone, but it will be. It will be surprising to those people who continue to believe that for some reason the China-led globalized world order is going to be so much better than the NATO-led globalized world order when it is the exact same thing being pushed in largely the same ways. Uh, in this case, people are going to say, well, look, they're at least they're polling the public about GMOs before they you know, foist it on them. But no, if you, I mean, if you read into it, uh, no, they're preparing a giant PR campaign to indoctrinate the Chinese public to go along with it. And they're partnering up with Syngenta and all of these, you know, global seed corporations that have monopolized, uh, largely monopolized the, the seeds of the entire planet. And they're going to go along with the GMO agenda. It's just, a, it's just a, the process. What's the best way to get the Chinese people on board with this? Uh, how, how can we indoctrinate them properly? So, um... It will be interesting and disappointing, I'm sure, to see the reaction of certain people, including a certain someone who will remain nameless, who's written extremely great work and done an extremely great book on GMOs and the, the threat of GMOs, but is now a big China, China, rah, rah, rah kind of guy who will probably not say anything at all about China's uh, adoption and, and embracing of GMO foods. But, uh, and I expect that to be par for the course for the people who are putting their head in the sand and believing that somehow China is going to be different in all of this. No, it is a world order, a new world order. And the only question is how to get the Chinese public best on board with this as they move into their globalization 2.0 that we were talking about the other week. Uh, that's right. Well, and again, of course, everything that we talk about will always be included down in the show notes. And as a little bit of related background on the aforementioned golden rice, how about this one? GMO golden rice trial fail. 
stunted plants, and reduced grain yields. So the very things that they say they're going for with this GM Technologies have been shown in some tests. And actually, this article from The Ecologist is about a survey of all kinds of – it's a it's a summation of all the surveys that show how the golden rice trials failed. So finally, on this New World Next Week episode, hey, one good China story deserves another, right? As we go from the PR push for GMO – to registering for the Internet, as we've kind of feared was coming all along the way. China's leading search engine to require real name registration for its services. This via ECNS, a.k.a. China News. China's leading search engine, Baidu, now requires users of the company's service, services, including popular online forum Baidu Teba and their cloud storage service, to register their real identities before June. Otherwise, they may be prevented from accessing these services, which search engine, popular online forum, and cloud services. That pretty much sounds like you rolled in Google and Facebook and Amazon services all into one giant company. Baidu said in a statement that the requirement was in accordance with China's cyberspace law, which stipulates that an Internet operator should require its users to provide real identities before publishing content and using instant messaging. The law will take effect on June 1st. Based on that requirement, Internet users should access the services with registered cell phone numbers. One telephone number could be used to verify several accounts so that the users do not need to delete their backup accounts. The requirement, you see how this keeps going sort of back to the top of the pyramid, as it were. The requirement follows a notice by China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology in November of just last year, 2016, which required everyone in China to use a SIM card registered with a real name in their mobile phones by June 30th. So pretty much by the end of June, China will pretty much all, all, all be registered. But don't worry, just like we've noted previously, they promise to, quote, provide higher level data protection to real name users. So don't worry about, of course, all your personal information being leaked or stolen or sold or hacked. James. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, what exactly? What is that? That is a threat. That is the, uh, you know, the mafia protection racket. Hey, guys, a uh, nice shop here. It'd be a shame if it got torched to the ground, right? Hey, guys, nice uh, data you've got there. It'd be a shame if that got uh, hacked or leaked or stolen somehow or other, right? So, yeah, um, I mean, register or else. And this is another case of a, a story where I'm at. The only thing that surprises me is that this wasn't already in place. I, I thought these types of laws were already in place in China. But anyway, no, OK, they're well, they're going to be in place. And it will be another example of that phenomenon where, of course, there will be ways around it, just like the uh, China, the Great Firewall of China. You can get around it with VPNs and things. But to get around it, you will have to be a criminal. They, ha they are criminalizing activities that victimless crimes, but anyway, they're going to criminalize the getting around this. They're going to criminalize being on the internet without giving your real name and data and phone number and all of that, and ultimately linking it to your fingerprints and your DNA and whatever else they uh, they stipulate further down the line. So, um, yeah, you, you they're going to make criminals out of anyone who doesn't want to give this data to the government, and uh, that's that's how it rolls in communist China. Now, again, this is another example of people who think that the China-led globalization 2.0, hey, rise of Eurasia, it's going to be so much great. No, it's going to be, this is the nightmare. This is the technocratic nightmare that they're trial ballooning in China once again, and that China is going to be spreading out everywhere that it uh, puts its tentacles with its one belt, one road connections that it's making right now. And uh, lots more news on that front coming out. So people can check my Twitter feed for more on that, some of the machinations that are going on on that front. But still, uh, this is the way it's going to roll. And as usual, China is being the test case for social engineering on a mass scale. Um, will people go along with it? How, how best can they roll this out to people? And how effectively can they clamp down on people using the internet without giving their entire personal history and details to, directly to the government? In some related news, and I think in a way it kind of brings us back full circle the way this episode kind of began after claiming the right to collect everyone's browser history Theresa may is going to protect you from the internet now the uk is planning to introduce huge regulations on the way the internet works allowing the government to decide what is said online that's the quote from the independent of course following up on the snoopers charter the investigatory powers act 
And now, of course, with the Manchester bombing as the backdrop to all of this and tanks on the streets in the UK, I think the sort of solution to this problem and reaction, the synthesis, if you will, is now completely being served up and we can see it. Some good news, please, perhaps. <laughs> Some of the ways we're winning in solutions-oriented stories, the new peer-to-peer -peer video sharing site BitChute that we've talked about and that we've moved a lot of our videos to, they now support video embedding. That's right, James, and you were actually one of the first to to add that in. I'm a little... No, 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 the first. <laughs> the, the first. The first. <laughs> <laughs> well, and someone else who is the first is about to crack the decade mark of making independent crowdfunded media. Congratulations, buddy. I know your decade birthday is coming up soon. So I want to be one of the one of the first, if not the first, to say congratulations. Well, I think you well, maybe not the first, but at any rate, I truly appreciate it. And obviously so much of uh, the Corbett Report and what it's become couldn't have happened without your help as well. So thank you very much for that. And I hope people will support Media Monarchy over at MediaMonarchy.com media slash support. Uh, People-powered, pow people-funded media brought to you by you. Uh, let's keep doing it over and over and over a million billion times. James, thanks again for three great stories. Thanks, buddy. Take care.